Hello, BookTube. Matthew at Mayberry Book Club and I uh, are making his channel title a reality. We have made a little book club of two. Uh, we're reading books together, month by month, and we thought it was totally appropriate for the month of October to read Frank Herbert's novel, Dune. Uh, because a squintillion dollar movie is being made of Dune and it's premiering later uh, next week uh, in October, starring an all-star cast mostly composed of Timothée Chalamet and his face. Uh, it's an auteur director, so I don't have much hope that I'm going to like it. We'll see. I could be pleasantly surprised. Uh, I don't think I'm going to see it in the theater. I know that people do that. I know that book, uh, movie bro tubes especially do that. But the, I, I'm, the idea of going to a movie theater with COVID in the world just seems dystopian to me. It just seems like you're literally asking for trouble. Uh, so I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> I have a friend who works in Hollywood. She sent me a, a partial uh, electronic screener for part of this movie, but I know that she can send me the whole thing. I, 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 I'm long since past asking her to do that. I'm sure that the whole thing has gone out to critics already. So I will watch it, but I'll watch it in the comfort of my own home. Thank you very much. Uh, but we are in our the third part of our read-along, which is a little bit odd because the read-alongs are going to continue even though this part of the read-along ends the book. This is the story of, of young Paul Atreides, a member of a noble house that is destroyed in a feudal power play earlier in the novel. Paul and his mother Jessica are refugees who are thrown on the good graces of the native people of the planet Arrakis, Dune, uh, the Fremen, who have plans of their own. They have a long-term plan to turn Dune into a green paradise in which water runs along the surface and anyone can drink their fill, where it won't be a desert planet anymore. And they use the enormous profits that they get from the spice trade on Dune to bribe the spacing guild into making sure that nobody knows they are going about that project. They have, they have a long-standing uh, culture that lives in the open desert. They can ride the great sandworms that plague the planet. They, are, they have detailed knowledge of storms and how to survive them, how to survive in the waterless world of Dune. Uh, Paul and Jessica learn those ways in the second part of the book, Muad'Dib, that we read last time. And this third part, the prophet, is the rousing conclusion to the book. <laughs> Paul, Paul becomes a religious figure to the Fremen. He becomes the Mahdi. He becomes the, uh, their chosen one, their savior, their messiah, who their uh, religion predicts will come from the outer world, will not be one of their own. Uh, he also becomes the Kwisatz Haderach, which is a, a figure that the Bene Gesserit, a, a secret society, a, a secretive society of uh, all female society, super nuns, uh, have been aiming bloodlines in the Imperium towards for millennia. They have been trying to, to breed a super male version of a Bene Gesserit uh, reverend mother. Someone who has uh, vast back memories in the science fiction world that Frank Herbert creates for Dune, uh, your memories are encoded into your genes. Now, that doesn't happen. But in this world, it does. In this world, everything that you experience, lines of dialogue, specific door combinations, every movement on a street or a sidewalk, every memory of every kind is in your genes. So that when you, so that someone who has access to your genetic information will have all of your memories. Uh, and the Bene Gesserit Reverend Mothers can do that, but only for their female line of descent. The Kwisatz Haderach, the figure that they are breeding towards, will be able to do it with all of the genetic past that, uh, that pertains. Uh, the Bene Gesserit have been breeding bloodlines in the noble houses, for a long time, in order to achieve that, the Atreides are only one of those bloodlines. They've been uh, they've been working along all, all sorts of other prominent families in the Imperium as well, behind the scenes, without those families knowing what was going on. Uh, and Paul Atreides' mother, Jessica, is a Bene Gesserit, and she was instructed by the Sisterhood to produce for Duke Leto, Paul Atreides' father, uh, a daughter, not a son. The Bene Gesserit have vast powers over their body, their reflexes, their senses, uh, and can alter their body chemistry so that a Bene Gesserit acolyte who is impregnated by a man can determine the gender of her child. Uh, 
Jessica refuses because she knows she loves her Duke and knows how much he wants a son. So she gives him a son against the sisterhood's advice. Uh, and there's all sorts of speculation. What will that do to the carefully cultivated breeding line? The thing that the sisterhood doesn't seem to anticipate is that the drug they use in order to awaken their past memories, the drug, the spice melange that comes only from Doom, saturates the planet. And Paul is highly attuned to it, genetically speaking. It turns out, especially in, in the segment that we just finished, Muad'Dib, that once Paul is saturated with the drug melange, he becomes the Kwisatz Haderach. <laughs> Only it's not what the Sisterhood thought. It's far more powerful, far more uh, amazing a thing, and totally not under their control. They didn't anticipate that. They didn't anticipate the Kwisatz Haderach being the Mahdi, being the, the prophet long foretold by the Fremen, who would generate their fanatical loyalty. They become fanatically loyal to Paul Atreides. Uh, and they become his shock troops. And they are better fighters than the shock troops of the Emperor. And in the section that we're reading today, the section that we're reading today is the finale of the book. We are going to continue the read-along next week because we're going to read all the appendices that Frank Herbert adds. It's a whole other section to the book. But here is, is the rousing finale where Paul assembles his, his revenge against the Emperor. It's a little bit difficult to, to talk about it without spoiling it. And I... I, on the one hand, I would say, well, Frank Herbert's novel, Dune, has been widely considered the greatest science fiction novel ever written, almost since the day that it appeared. So how could I spoil it? How, who doesn't know? But part of this read-along is to encourage you to read this book if you've never done it. So I'm assuming there are plenty of people out there who don't know how this book ends, and I don't want to spoil it. Uh, but Paul, in this section, uh, enacts his revenge against the Emperor and against House Harkonnen, the specific uh, Imperial House that betrayed and took down his own family. He works his revenge against both of them. His revenge against the Emperor is broad scale, and Herbert writes the dickens out of it. His revenge against the Harkonnens is very personal. As I've mentioned before, a pivotal part of the action of this novel comes down to a half-naked fight, knife fight between two young men. Between Paul Atreides, stripped to the waist, and Fade Rotha, who is the nephew of Baron Harkonnen, who's the, Baron Harkonnen's heir. He's the future of House Harkonnen. There are no others. There are no other heirs. Uh, Fade Rotha calls Paul Trades out. They have a fight. And if that fight goes wrong, keep in mind, Paul, by this point in the, in the novel, Spice, suffusing Paul Atreides' body, has fully activated his prescience, his ability to foresee the future, to a greater extent than any human has ever experienced. But not a perfect extent. He has known, since his prescient visions have been a coming to him, he has seen a vision of the future, one possibility of the future in which he dies of a, of a knife fight, that he dies at the, on the knife point of an enemy. When he's first introduced into Fremen society, he has to fight a Fremen named Jamis, a knife fight. Again, stripped to the waist, just two people fighting a knife fight. And when Paul is approaching that fight, he isn't sure, is this the moment? Is this maybe the moment when I will die? I could die in this moment. My vision of the future is not precise. I see a horrifying future in which legions of Fremen terrorize the whole of the Imperium. Thousands of worlds, unstoppable in their might, in their military might, with, the, with my family's banner, the Atreides banner, uh, being born into war by all of them. Uh, he sees that very clearly, but on the personal level, he doesn't. He survives that knife fight when he enters the Fremen society, but he's not one. At the end of this section of the book, he's not one hundred percent sure that the knife fight against Fade Rother won't be the one that where he dies. Uh, it could be. It adds there. Are, it's a hugely well done scene. The final four scenes in this novel are hugely well done, incredibly exciting, and uh, and incredibly sweeping. And that ends the book. I know this isn't particularly satisfying because I can't really talk about the ending of the book without spoiling it. But it is epic. It, it is uh, the complete consummation of all the buildup that has gone before. One of the things that a lot of you, some of you have been emailing me because you've been reading this book, prompted by me and Matthew. Uh, and one of the things you've been commenting on is the huge, almost daunting level of world building that goes on in the beginning of this book. It's absolutely true. There's a, Herbert drops you into a world that is fleshed out down to the last detail. 
down to the last detail. That is why the, the famous blurb on this book, it's actually on the cover of this FF Masterworks thing. Arthur Clarke said that he knows nothing comparable to this book other than Lord of the Rings. And it's for that reason. It, they do the same thing. They drop you into a world in which the world building has happened to a fairly well long before you got there. It daunts people who start Dune, and it comes to its beautiful consummation at the end of this book. Uh, I cannot recommend it strongly enough, but it's it's really, really well done. And the characters live in the world, which is one of the things I love about this book from the beginning. There is no, uh, there is no, typically speaking, in a big science fiction novel that does this much elaborate world building, the author would put in a newcomer. There isn't anyone really like that. You could say that Paul Atreides, who is new to the planet Dune, is that kind of a focal character for the author to provide exposition. And he does. He provides, the characters provide Paul with lots of exposition about what he can expect on the planet Dune. The Fremen have to explain their world to Paul and Jessica once they take in those fugitives. But Paul and Jessica are still deeply embedded in a thoroughly imagined world that is not explained. And there's lots of other stuff that just you just have to hit the ground running with this book and scrabble to keep up with it. Uh, I myself think that that pays off enormously. Uh, and one of the ways it does is that the characters live in the world of the novel. Uh, in, they refer to the, the internal events of the novel without constantly thinking beyond it, if that makes any sense. One of the problems that I tend to have with Lord of the Rings, one of the very few problems I tend to have, is that because the One Ring is threatening all of reality, basically all of reality, all of the characters in Lord of the Rings are increasingly uh, tempted to think about that bigger picture without thinking about the nitty-gritty of their world. Whereas that doesn't tend to happen in Dune. I don't think anybody in Dune really expects uh, the outcome. When Early on in the book, when Paul is uh, threatening revenge against uh, the Imperium, the characters don't believe him. <laughs> As well, they shouldn't. Uh, but later on, uh, it becomes more and more likely, especially when he gains control not only of the Fremen and not only of his own supernatural abilities to know what his opponents are going to do before they do it, but also the Spice. When he gains control of the Spice, complete control, as he puts it, he who has the power to destroy a thing has complete power over that thing. If he's willing to destroy it, then he controls it. Uh, all of that is fleshed out wonderfully at the end of the book. Uh, there, there are some scenes that I that I love. I've read them on this channel before, but I'm not going to do that in, in this video. Instead, I'm going to wrap things up and we're going to move on to the appendices next time, uh, which is a, kind of a weird thing to do. It's kind of a weird reading experience on its own. I'm planning on having a lot of fun rereading those things. I've been having a lot of, of fun rereading Dune just in general. I never pass up an opportunity to reread this book. Uh, but in addition to... Uh, reading and talking about the appendices. I'll be glad to do that with you. I'm also going to knuckle under to booktube peer pressure. A great number of you have emailed me. <laughs> I leave my email on every video. A great number of you have emailed me and said that in addition to talking about uh, a read-along of Dune with Matthew, you would really like it if I reviewed the movie. <laughs> I don't usually do that on this channel, but I will gladly do that. I will gladly review the movie for you. Uh, so that'll be next week uh, when I, what is this? The It's hard for me to think about the date in October because of the weather, but I, I we're, we're moving towards the final week of October. So the movie is coming out soon. Uh, I will see it. I will watch it a couple of times and then I will review it for you <laughs> in addition to talking about the appendices of the book. So that that's going to wrap it up for now. I'm, I'm going to wrap this up, but I'll be back. Uh, I, I've had a little bit of a spotty problem with BookTube lately here because I've had an unexpected guest at Hyde Cottage. But that guest is now gone. That guest has been calmed, petted, reassured, had their ego and other things stroked, and is now on the road back home. Hopefully with a whole bunch of enthusiasm for for the work in hand, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, so that is now done. That is now over with. So we I can get back to regularly scheduled program. Uh, but that's it for Doom. We finished the novel. I hadn't realized until uh, I was thinking about this video how little I can really talk about it for people who are watching this series but have never watched any of my other discussions of Doom. In previous... In, Years ago, I have repeatedly talked about this novel. I've done read-alongs of it. In those earlier videos, I do talk about the specifics of how the book ends. 
because those were me. It wasn't a read-along with another channel. It was just me. So if you're interested in hearing discussions of that, I'll try to find those videos and leave links down below. Just as long as you know, if you watch those videos, you're going to be told what happens uh, in specific detail as opposed to broad detail. The broad detail I'll say about the end of Dune is that it's a humdinger of an ending. You're going to love it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. We will resume. We will conclude Dune next week. <laughs> so I will see you then. Thank you, BookTube.